Hi. I recently started a new FPS game project which I'll be posting my progress in this devlog. Today I want to show you my first person character setup. This will not be an in-depth tutorial, but I will try to show as much as possible. Also there might be better ways to do some of the systems you will see in this video. In that case I would love to hear your suggestions. If we examine the character from outside you can see that it has a full model in third person. Apart from the legs this mesh will not be the mesh we are seeing in the first person view. We can see another set of arms in FPS view, or when we turn off the game mode in editor. This model and its animations are a bit more detailed and tailored specifically to be viewed in first person. We can see the legs in FPS view but torso and head meshes have, owner no see, and, hidden shadows, flags enabled. They are invisible to the owner but still cast shadows while not being rendered. First person arms looks a bit weird from outside, that's because they are rendered very close to the camera using Panini projection method. I will get to why that's necessary. Also they do not cast shadows to world objects, using the self shadow only flag. They still receive convincing lighting from the environment. And I believe it's cheaper to render compared to two camera method. You may have noticed the third leg on the character. That's actually a melee weapon. While the fist melee weapon is invisible the kick is visible when attacking. I didn't use the third person mesh's foot for this attack since it was not consistent in going through the objects when extended. This mesh is also rendered using the panini material function. This is what some would call a conventional first person character setup. It has a capsule collision, a camera attached to it and a standard unreal movement component. It's quite versatile and easy to work with compared to other methods such as a full body rig. I also wanted to have a couple more things this setup mostly lacks in games, a third person avatar, shadows, and visible legs. So it has third person meshes added on top. Third person meshes are not centered to avoid intersecting with the FPS arms. Also otherwise you would be looking directly inside the legs when looking down. I also have a couple more components, an audio component for character voice and a light source for the flashlight. I use leader pose component to sync third person meshes together. Head and torso meshes copy their states from the legs mesh. This also works well with simulated meshes. This setup also eliminates any jitter and provides a smoother experience. That is also possible with full body rigs, but would require more work and knowledge on IK systems or carefully animated character meshes. That is not necessary here as we are just attaching the arms mesh and the camera to a fixed point. There are several more traversal options like vaulting, sliding, taking cover, and leaning. I tried to keep it somewhat realistic, as I'm not planning this as a movement shooter right now. Also keep in mind that most of these animations and models are placeholders. I plan to replace them later in development and they should look much better when an actual animator works on them. I am also duplicating the weapon mesh for the third person character. It's mainly for casting a shadow that fits the character since the actual weapon will be located in a different space and rendered very close to camera. Since I have two meshes to animate I use different animation blueprints for both. Third person mesh uses a locomotion set blended with upper body animations for different weapon stances. I can also mirror the base animation since some stances are right foot forward, like the knife and one handed pistol stance. This enables reusing a smaller number of animations for locomotion. I also mirror the direction variable while doing this, otherwise it plays the opposite direction animation. FPS mesh animation blueprint is simpler since it only deals with upper body. I'm also pulling most variables from the other blueprint since they are already calculated for the same character. I have different stances for weapon types. 
I also have additive procedural recoil animations, montage slots for interaction and attacks. I have a left-hand correction IK set up for different two-handed weapon shapes. It adds to the original left-hand transform instead of overriding it, otherwise there might be a slight delay positioning at every frame. These left-hand offset values are relative to the right hand and set only when equipping a new weapon. Since I attach the weapons to right hand directly, left-hand offset won't change with different animations. Like I said, I'm using a Panini projection material function for FPS meshes. That includes weapons, arms, and even effects. This material function allows me to render FPS meshes very close the camera, squishing them in the process, that is why it's not optimal to be used with shadows, so only self-shadowing is allowed. Also it allows you to set any FOV value for the weapons, I find that lower values look much better than the actual camera FOV. Since it's rendered closer to the camera it prevents clipping with world objects while receiving approximately the same lighting. This way even the longer weapons won't intersect with the world objects. Also weapons would look much smaller and stretched out with the current actual camera FOV, which is 85. I also needed to render the effects in the same manner, otherwise they wouldn't spawn in the correct position. Keep in mind, that what we are seeing is not the real position of the weapon, so the actual bones and sockets are a bit further away. So it spawns two different particle systems based on who is using the weapon, one with Panini enabled. Shells are a bit different, they disable the effect based on distance so they eject from the correct position and look normal on the ground at the same time, the effect is still visible if you manage to get close enough. Thank you for watching. As I said this is not an in-depth tutorial but I hope it is somewhat helpful or entertaining. I will be covering more of the underlying systems before I get to actual game design. I'm thinking of examining the third person character next. I also have next episodes planned for the UI, weapons, health and damage systems, interactable and breakable objects, AI and effects. Let me know if there is something specific that catches your eye in these videos and I will try to talk more about them.